It is known that 4z is the set of integer multiples of 4. Let k plus 4z be the set of all integers multiple of 4, uh, integer multiples of 4, but each are added by k. Which of the following is equal to 4z? Is it 1 plus 4z, 2 plus 4z, 3 plus 4z, or 4 plus 4z? We'll see. What's your guess? For this one, this is in fact 4z. So integer uh, multiples of 4, either positive or negative. Note that 0 is also an integer multiple of 4 because 4 times 0 is 0. If I have 1 plus 4z, so I will add each term of this by, by 1. Negative 12 plus 1 plus negative 12 will be negative 11. Negative uh, 1 plus negative 8, it's negative 7. 1 plus negative 4 is negative 3, and so on. That's why you have here the set 1 plus 4z. If you have 2 plus 4z, each of this will be added by 2. 2 plus negative 12 will be negative 10. 2 plus negative 8 will be negative 6. 2 plus negative 4 will be negative 2, and so on. If you have 3 plus 4z, so 3 plus negative 12 will be negative 9. 3 plus negative 8 will be negative 5. 3 plus negative 4 is uh, negative 1, and so on. So this is your set. And if you have 4 plus 4z, 4 plus negative 12, it's negative 8. 4 plus negative 8, it's negative 4. 4 plus negative 4 is 0, and so on. So, which, if you could see here, that 4z has the same elements as 4 plus 4z. Take a look. They are the same, right? Therefore, we will go with letter D. 42. Which of the following pro are properties of a ring? With this notation, so we have your real, like real numbers uh, with addition as a op first operation and multiplication as the second operation. According to Fralay 2002, is the R plus a billion? Is the, should the multiplication be associative? For all the A, B, and C element of R, the left and right distributive laws apply or all of the above? What do you think? That is, according to Fralay, all of these properties have to be satisfied. In fact, this is your uh, ring. Letter D. 43, evaluate A, B, given that A is this matrix and B is, uh, A is 2, negative 1, 1, 2. B is 1, 1, negative 3, 8. So for this one, we will be looking for the product. And remember that multiplication of square matrices in general is not commutative. It is commutative only if you are multiplying with the identity element or if you are multiplying an element an, a matrix with its inverse but for now so the a will be mentioned first and b with the second so to do that uh we will multiply the first row with the first column of b uh the first row of a with the first column of b so two times one plus negative one times negative three. That's why we have it here. Next, we will multiply the second row of A with the elements in the first column of B. So one times one plus two times negative three. That's why you have it here. Next, we will multiply the first row of A with the second 
a column of B. So 2 times 1 plus negative 1 times 8, which is found here. And lastly, the second row of A will be multiplied with the second column of B. So you have 1 times 1 plus 2 times 8. Simplifying each, you will have this one as uh, 2 plus 3. The one here will be 1 minus 6. This one will become 2 minus 8. And lastly, this, uh, this one here below, this one will become 1 plus 16. And it will become AB equals 5, negative 6, negative 5, 17. If you answer D, great job. I hope you got it. 44. Find the determinant of A. If you if A here is a 3 by 3 matrix. So we have here. Did you go for negative 373? Negative 337? 58 or 139. To get the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix, we uh, the shortcut here is you multiply first uh, going to the left uh, from uh, top, I mean top left to bottom right. So multiply this one. 4 times negative 3 times 8 here. Next, 3 times 9 times. You pair it with the 1 here. This one. So 3 times 9 times 0. Next, you're done with this. You notice you have 3 numbers here. So 3 times 9, to make it 3, you have to multiply by 0. And for this one, 5 times 7 times 1, which is this one. So everything here will be added. And you will subtract it with the product going uh, from bottom left to upper right. So 0 times negative 3 times 5 will be this. Next, 7 times 9 times 4 you have here. And lastly, plus 8 times 3 times 1. You may review how to get the determinant if you need to. And everything here is added and subtracted by everything that goes in a uh, this direction. And so if you simplify that, that becomes negative 96 plus 0 plus 35, subtracted by the sum of 0 to 152 and 24, that becomes negative 61 minus 276 or negative 337 letter B. Forty-five. Given A is this matrix and B is this matrix, what is true to both matrices? Did you go for A, B, C, or D? What is your guess? Are A and B anti-symmetric with each other? Yes, because when we say um, anti-symmetric, so if you get the transpose of one matrix, it you will produce the other matrix. When we say transpose, the row becomes the column and the column becomes the row. So for example, if I have here A, the transpose of A, you, this row here, which is 1, negative 3, will become the column here. And this second row. So you see the first row becomes the first column of B. And the second row of A becomes the second column of B. Or the other way around is true. If that is the case, then they are anti-symmetric. Are A and B elements of M2 or your 2 by 2 matrices? 
Yes, because you see that for each matrix, they have ro uh, two rows and two columns. Is the trace of A equal to the trace of B? Yes, because when we say trace, it's the sum of all the entries in the main diagonal. Here, the main diagonal entries for A are one and one. So one plus one is two. For B, one plus one is also two. So three is correct, but four is not correct. Why? Because if you add A and B, they will not produce a zero matrix. When we say zero matrix, um, it's a matrix whose entries are all zero. But here, if you have one plus one, that's two. So there is an element that is not zero. So that is a sufficient evidence to say that the sum of A and B will not be a two by two zero matrix. Hence, we could say that one, two, and three are correct. Letter B. I hope you got it. 46. The dot or inner product of the n vectors in Rn. They know, for example, if you have here your vectors A and B, defined as the with a dot product, inner dot, dot or inner product as this one. So Take note, you could only do this if they have the same uh, dimensions as well. So A1 will be multiplied with B1 here, A2 will be multiplied with uh, B2 until at such time that AN will be multiplied with B sub N and you add their results. Suppose I have A with element with this entries 3, negative 1, 9 and B with elements 10, 7, and 13. What is our dot product? Did you go for 120, 13, 140, or 155? To answer this problem, it is very important to use the definition of that you could see here. So we will multiply the 3 and 10, the negative 1 with 7, and the 9 with 13, and add all of their results. With such, you have 30 minus 7 plus 117, which when simplified is 140. So the dot product here is C, 140. 47. If a matrix has a zero row or column, then what is the value of its determinant? Is it 1, 0, non-zero real, or undefined? We have to take note of this, ladies and gentlemen, that once you have a row or a column consisting entirely of zeros, then the determinant is always zero. Letter B. It's, in fact, a theorem in your linear algebra. 48. The given cyclic multiplication table represents a cyclic group. Find D squared. Is it A, B, C, or D? So to look for D squared, remember that D squared means D times D. So I mean, in this case, D is operated with D. If you could see here, this is the D, and this is the other D. And what is their intersection? So if you draw horizontal here, draw something vertical here, you could actually see that this C is their intersection. This means that D stars, D star D or D squared is C. Letter C is the correct answer. 49. Which of the following is the possible order of a subgroup of a group of order 10? Is it possible to have the ones order 3, 4, 5, or 7? What do you think? In your abstract algebra, what does it say? What is a possible order of a subgroup? Without actually giving a specific example, let me quote Lagrange's theorem, that is, 
the order of a subgroup divides the order of a group. In other words, a subgroup, the order of a subgroup should be a divisor or a factor of the order of a group. We know that among the choices, only 5 divides 10, while 3, 4, and 7 do not divide 10. Hence, 5 is a possible order of a subgroup of a group of order 10. Letter C is the answer. And one more. I hope you got it, by the way. And if you wish, you could search more or research more about Lagrange's theorem. And number 50, all altitudes of triangle ACE are drawn and they intersect at point G. What do you call point G? Is it the orthocenter, in center, circumcenter, or centroid? For this item, remember that orthocenter is the intersection of the three altitudes and is in fact the answer to this question. In center is those is that of the angle bisectors. The circumcenter is the intersection, intersection of the three perpendicular bisectors and the centroid is the intersection of, of the three medians. I hope that you answered A and if you did, Great job. So I hope you understood something out of our lessons for today, out of the discussion today. And if ever there are some concepts that you do not understand, feel free to comment it, especially if you have clarifications. And also, please feel free to like this video and subscribe to our channel. And with that, TYVM, thank you very much and a great day to one and all.